Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Uh, namaste. Shin uh, chao. Kopen krap. Konnichiwa. Welcome to the plenary session, Horasis Asia meeting 2021. It is always a pleasure to be invited to this uh, distinguished forum. I am Tsum Ishii, Deputy Managing Editor, the Asahi Shimbun Japanese Daily Newspaper. I am also a visiting professor at Doshisha University in Kyoto. Today I will moderate the session. I first thank Dr. Frank Jürgen Richter for giving me the opportunity to moderate the session. It is my fifth conference of Horasis since China meeting at Sheffield in 2017. This session today is focusing on Asian economic development in post-COVID recovery. COVID has not changed the fundamentals, though global supply and demand uh, became unbalanced. Many Asian farms survived the first COVID wave, but secondary infection was severe. When will supply chains will, uh, be fully rebuilt out of Asia and become stable? What novel ideas and products are supporting strong Asian economic development? Fortunately, uh, we have a relatively stable COVID situation in Asia currently. Uh, we are moving from the unvaccinated economy uh, to the vaccinated economy. But at the same time, we have other challenges like shortage of semiconductors, sharp rising of oil prices. Also, we have, uh, we have to note that there are some uh, political tensions in the region, in, in the Pacific. Uh, so there are so many unpredictable issues to tackle simultaneously. In that respect, today we welcome uh, three distinguished and very honorable guest speakers from India and Vietnam and Thailand. Uh, honorable Minakasi Weki, uh, Minister of State for External Affairs and Culture of India. Uh, honorable Gwen Min Vu, uh, Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs of Vietnam. And uh, Honorable San Sam Samarapa, uh, Vice Minister for, for Commerce of Thailand. He will uh, join us uh, in a pre-recorded video later. So I would like each other, each of the panelists, to speak uh, briefly about three, four minutes to explain the current economic situations under COVID and the visions for post-COVID recovery. Uh, now, uh, speakers will speak with the order given by Dr. Frank Jürgen, and uh, uh, then uh, I will uh, give the first floor to uh, Minister uh, uh, Miyakasi Reki, please. Namaste. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, for the simple reason that we have a parliamentary meeting and I have to be present there. Uh, thank you, uh, Excellencies, and uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Moderator. I must uh, begin by saying uh, the good news first that the good news is that uh, India has uh, vaccinated more than a billion people. To be precise, 1.20 billion people is what we have vaccinated and close to 38 percent of the entire population and we are a very very large country uh, close to a continent single dose is given to almost 80 percent plus of the population and double dose has been given to close to 40 percent of the population so uh, considering uh, this number india has contributed not only to support its own health infrastructure but has also protected the surroundings because as long as any one person remains unprotected uh, from covid he is also a carrier for further infections and further uh, modifications in the genome and uh, uh, further cause uh, a co cause of concern for everyone so that is india's uh, method of working and when we begin with the first wave and the kind of lockdown we pursued and everybody came on board. I was just thinking how the economies work. So priority in our country was given to the human life and saving human lives was more important than the economy to begin with. And now that we have all opened up, now the focus is going to be on economy because you, when you have successfully saved lives, you can focus on economies. And that is where when the people of the country and the communities are stakeholders in the well-being of nation, that itself adds up to the boost to the economy. Uh, COVID has awakened everyone around the world. The powers who be it, the supply chain mechanism, why it is essential to diversify the supply chains, 
why it is essential to have stable uh, uh, supply chains, how is it important to focus on health, why is it important that we need to, you know, if I can speak uh, the language of uh, Hindu religion and Buddhism, uh, Trishna, the greed has to be kept off for some time because if we focus on uh, cheaper iPhones, uh, then we are harming the world and we are harming the communities. I think the world needs to understand that economies don't operate in isolation. The world operates in togetherness and togetherness of being. And we, through our COVID protocols and manner of functioning, showed it and uh, set the examples before everyone. And grateful to all the people who contributed and all the nations who contributed when India was suffering during second wave and we were still working on the vaccines. Once we produced the vaccines and we started supplying to everyone else because we were in a position to recover ourselves. But when we started suffering more, obviously, national and sovereign duties uh, take uh, the front seat and we had to uh, meet the requirements of within the country. Now that we have bettered that, we are again open to supplying it to the world. In addition to the COVID app, which we gave, which is an open source app, anyone can access it from anywhere and use the app for their own purposes. And that is India's contribution to the world at large. And when we say Vasudev Kutumbakam, the world is one big family. It is not just a saying, it is a belief with which we work that resources, knowledge, expertise, everything is to share with the world and goodness must prevail. I think the, the COVID lessons are more in the nature of human psyche as well. COVID lessons are not just in economy. COVID lessons are not just in pandemic management. COVID sessions uh, is uh, pandemic is not just a manner in which we have to think of good and bad about power, uh, but we also have to think of human psyche and, and i think in that sense covid has been an awakening call to the mankind that if world needs to sustain itself and sustainable development to everything else needs to be focused on with these words thank you very much i hope i haven't exceeded my time limit you muted sir you're muted Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Minister. Uh, it's really comprehensive and uh, I'm uh, very much impressed by the, the remark, especially on uh, what you uh, stressed, the importance of you know human being, life, uh, rather than the economy, because the uh, economy cannot sustain without having uh, you know, a people's life. Uh, so uh, in that sense, uh, uh, human security uh, under the COVID is quite important. So uh, I uh, now uh, we face so many challenges, uh, not only short term but long term. Uh, so, uh, can I ask uh, uh, you to elaborate some of the uh, uh, issues and pro uh, proposals you, you pointed out? That uh, uh, because you know under current situation, uh, there is a report that a new type of variant is coming from uh, some parts of the world, and also at the time we are easing uh, the restrictions of uh, you know foreign travelers to come in. Uh, so what uh, types of measures are uh, quite essential for your country uh, for the short term goals and also uh, longer term goals uh, you you have you know some visions about you know coalition of democracies mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe you can pick up some of the priorities and uh, or you can elaborate to us so today is our law day and the constitution day which means we are a country which has kept our diversity uh, uh, very alive but we are bound by the same constitution and thus we are one country of such large numbers. And we are a democratic country, that too. So democracy, I always maintain, has a cost to pay. And cost to pay towards restrictions, towards uh, giving place to all kinds of opinions. To work with that larger number is something we all need to learn and work on constantly. Uh, so rule of law is something which binds us all and rule of law is something which is going to decide the future of this planet and that rule of law whether it's in the sea or in the space or in economic uh, conditions that has to be kept and whether it's climate change we are dealing with or we are dealing with anything else I think rule of law is going to be the foundation for the future so that is one the second aspect is when we are transitioning 
from the usual sources of energy to large sources of energy. We also have to think in terms of uh, developmental justice. So developmental justice for developing countries becomes imperative because there are people who are living below poverty lines. There are people who do not have access to energy. So all those people need access to basic amenities. And then they seek access to basic amenities, their level will increase the energy requirement. On the other side, there are several countries and several people who are consuming more energy than the repositioned uh, proportionate energy. In that sense, the cost has to be borne. And thus, developmental challenges will require the money on the table and and i think when we are talking of sustainability green energy uh, diversification of supply chains we need uh, funding and finance and that is what is going to make a stable world and stable economy for everyone then we think in terms of resources resources also uh, one is knowledge that when you are in 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 terms of manufacturing hub whether it's uh, vietnam thailand india and india has shown that how during COVID a country which did not produce PP kits became an exporter of PP kits within four months uh, of uh, the pandemic. How when we were not producing the vaccine within nine to ten months of its existence we produced the vaccine and that was not for ourselves that was for the world. How uh, the uh, uh, testing kits which were uh, concentrated in certain parts, the testing kits became imperative and we started having our own lab mechanism and we uh, worked on that. And that is again for the global good. I always maintain that what is good for a democracy in one part of the world is good for the other part of the world also. And as long as we follow a rule-based engagement, it will only serve people at large. So rule-based engagement is the priority and that is what democracy stand for. Every opinion has a place, but within the rule and regulation, the opportunities need to sustain themselves. And, and I think the world has come to a realization uh, how important it is to have rule-based engagement and uh, uh, non-observation of rule can lead to all kinds of wrongs in the social setup and the global setup. Thank you, Madam Minister. Uh, needless to say, you are the expert of the legal, uh, you know, issues as a lawyer and long-term career history about uh, your contribution to, uh, you know, promote rule of law uh, in your country and also beyond. So, uh, in that sense, uh, the importance of rule of law in terms uh, when we make business and we uh, seek for the recovery of economy, uh, this should be the base. Uh, I totally agree with the point you made. Uh, thanks so much. Um, do you still have? Uh, oh, maybe you have to leave now, right? One more, one more uh, statement I want to make. So while we are while we are thinking of economic recovery, we cannot lose track of spiritual recovery. And I must say that Namaste, which was part of our culture, is now accepted by the world because that is the right path. The right path, the right consciousness, the right resources, the right being is going to be the well-being of, and that is what spirituality is all about, that we are all consciously connected people. We all must work for a conscious planet. And when we put consciousness into action, the economy will be getting a boost of its own because the right investments need to be made at the right places. We are a young country waiting to pick on and give employment to so many people. We have the skill and we have the skill management and the resources. So a country rich in resources, uh, people, rule-based engagement, democracy. I think the Trishna needs to take a back seat. The greed needs to take a back seat. We all must put our heads together and boost the economy for well-being of everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again, Madam Minister, for your excellent uh, uh, remarks, uh, because I do agree that, uh, uh, you know, some of the uh, core philosophy of SDGs are very much, I believe, linked to the Asian tradition of religion, spirituality, Hinduism, Buddhism. Uh, it's really uh, a matter of peace in mind and uh, peace in, uh, you know, uh, all, all people, not only for individuals. So in that sense, uh, I think this is a key uh, when we think about the recovery of the economy after the COVID. 
So thank you again for your contribution and namaste. Thank you. So uh, as uh, she pointed out, uh, she has to leave uh, for the uh, duty, for her duty uh, in the parliamentary session. So uh, this uh, somewhat change of uh, the procedure, but uh, uh, I will move to uh, the second uh, speaker uh, uh, <coughs> from uh, Vietnam, uh, and, uh, Vice Minister uh, of, uh, for, for Foreign Affairs Vietnam, Honorable uh, 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 Vice Minister, uh, exter uh, just a moment, uh, Vice Minister, uh, Minister for, uh, Vice Minister uh, for Foreign Affairs of Vietnam, I'm so sorry, uh, Minister uh, Gwen Min Bu. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. And uh, uh, you have a, a great history as a diplomat and a long career in the ministry. And I heard that you recently, until recently, you served as an ambassador to Germany. So you know uh, not only the situation in Asia, but also the situation in Europe. Uh, there are some differences about the uh, COVID situation. They have uh, tighter lockdown and again. And uh, um, in Vietnam, I understand the situation is relatively calm, but uh, uh, still there is a small sign of uh, resurgence. But uh, uh, from your point of view, I'd like to share uh, with the audience. So now the floor is yours. Please, Minister Bu. Uh, Mr. Shutomi Ishii, Chair of the Plenary, uh, Distinguished uh, Audience, the Excellency, Ladies and Gentlemen, good afternoon uh, to all of you. It is uh, indeed a great honor and pleasure for me to be here and I fly as far as possible to thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, plenary. Uh, the Horaces uh, Asia Meeting uh, 2021 is organized at the right time as Asian countries are making their best efforts to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic economically and socially. And the topic of this plenary is really well chosen. And I, and I look forward to a very fruitful uh, discussion and exchange today. Uh, regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic in, in Vietnam, I just want to uh, inform you of the good news and the bad news. Uh, the bad news is that, uh, like uh, any other countries, uh, the outbreak of COVID-19 uh, caused by the Delta variant has uh, caused uh, unprecedented and social and economic uh, challenges to many countries, including Vietnam. Um, particularly, this uh, pandemic uh, has recently uh, hit, uh, I would say, the economic heart of the city, of the countries, uh, you know, the southern part of Vietnam. So uh, we have suffered uh, from major uh, economic, social, and even spiritual repercussion from this uh, pandemic. But uh, the good news is that uh, the current uh, 19 COVID uh, pandemic is now uh, brought uh, under control uh, due to our intensive efforts to vaccinate uh, the majority of our population and other uh, preventive measures, uh, what we call 5Ks uh, in Vietnamese or Five Ds uh, in English. Uh, they would do, uh, do wear mask, dis in fact, distance, do not gather, and declare uh, health conditions. Uh, so the situation is now brought under control. And the second uh, point I want to make is that we have uh, moved from uh, COVID zero COVID to safe and flexible adaptation and effective control of the pandemic, while restoring and promoting social economic activity and growth at the same time, at the moment. So economic activity in the country have been now uh, brought to normal, new normal, uh, I would say. So the, the three uh, critical uh, policy questions now facing uh, our uh, government and also the uh, strategy community in Vietnam is that one, how we can restore uh, uh, our economic activities and the dynamism uh, why bringing, continuing to bring uh, the uh, uh, pandemic uh, under control. And the second critical question is how we can, uh, on the one hand, resolve the uh, short-term, uh, you know, to tackle short-term economic problems facing the country, while at the same time uh, laying the foundation for more radical, medium and long-term reform, uh, you know, economic reform, uh, economic restructuring in the country. And the third critical question is how we 
uh, you know, tackle uh, the domestic urgent uh, domestic uh, issues facing our economy and our society while continuing to enhance international cooperation in order to uh, put in place and uphold the international, uh, the rule-based international system that continue to be effective in handling uh, differences and even conflicts in international relations and also uh, ensure a free uh, and open uh, trade and investment liberalization and facilitation because our economy is uh, one of the most open economy in Asia. So we cannot uh, you know, prosper and survive without continuing to open up, uh, continuing to rely on uh, international markets and the flows of uh, you know, uh, investment from outside in. So these are the three uh, political policy, critical policy questions uh, facing uh, our government at the moment. Uh, so I would like to, to just to temporarily end my introductory remarks here and look forward to the open discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Wu, uh, for your excellent uh, remarks. And uh, uh, especially I, I do understand that just uh, recently uh, your Prime Minister, uh, Fan Min Chim, uh, visited Japan. I heard you, you joined the Prime Minister too to come to Japan, right? Yes, I have just... Uh, accompanied my uh, Prime Minister uh, you know, in a very successful uh, visit to Japan. And uh, I'm very impressed with the uh, uh, you know, excellent uh, uh, results that your government and people have achieved in controlling uh, the uh, pandemic. And uh, it has uh, also brought out many important uh, lessons for us. Uh, one thing that really um, puzzled me is the... Uh, rapid decline of uh, positive case of COVID-19 in Japan. Mm. Uh, it is partly attributable to your high-level vaccination, but at the same time, I think uh, one of the key reasons is uh, your very high public awareness uh, about you know, controlling the pandemic. The people mm. are very obedient to you know, the laws and the regulation I see people wear, wearing masks uh, in very voluntary and very uh, self-conscious way, you know, on the street. I think, uh, uh, given the fact that uh, many other countries with the same level of vaccination still uh, record uh, high, uh, you know, incidence uh, of uh, positive cases, but uh, you know, in, in Japan, it is a really a very good example of how, uh, you know, public awareness uh, can. Uh, bring about very good results in disease control, but pandemic control in Japan. So it's a thank you, Minister. Wu. Yeah, thank, thank you, Minister. Wu. I mean, uh, I hope uh, this, uh, uh, you know, bilateral relations uh, and also global and regional cooperation uh, can uh, be beneficial for the recovery of the economy in the region. And in that sense, we have so many things to discuss. Uh, but before doing so, uh, I will uh, uh, pray the pre-recorded pre uh, video message from uh, uh, Thai a Minister of, of Commerce, uh, Vice Minister of Commerce, uh, just a moment. San <clears throat> uh, uh, Samarapa, uh, she's the Vice Minister of Commerce of Thailand. Uh, so for, uh, I would like to play the video, and after that, I come back to uh, uh, to the, the floor and ask uh, some questions uh, based on those pre remarks by uh, the minister, Thai minister. Just a moment. It is my pleasure to be here for the second time at the Horasis ASEAN meeting. This topic, ASEAN economic development in post-COVID recovery, is more pressing than ever. I am looking forward to contributing to the possibility forward to overcome the profile economic, political, and social disruption caused by the COVID-19. 
It is promising that the IMF still plays Asia as the fastest growing region globally. The most recent IMF report expects Asia economy to grow by while the global economy is projected to grow by 5.9% in 2021. That said, the delay from the vaccine rollout has led to a worsening economic prediction for many developing countries. Vaccination coverage is now the key determinant of economic recovery for many ASEAN countries are still behind those in Europe and North America. The acceleration of vaccine coverage will also help the region to resume growth in all the risk sector, which are among the main revenue of the regions. As global economic recovery cannot be achieved without universal vaccine access, this goal should be their governing priorities. Besides access to vaccine, we must ensure that economic revitalization is pursued alongside environment preservation. Climate change is one of the biggest threats in this era. We must examine our production and consumption action to ensure sustainable and resilience recovery. Therefore, I propose that ASEAN country promote the strategy to restore and shape the economy by focusing on sustainability and diversi diversification of value chain, including regionalization to mitigate risk. For example, participating in regional supply chain resilience initiative to streamline current trade investment and help prevent any potential disruption to supply chain. Projects such as advancing the development of ASEAN database and trade route and framework for enhancing supply chain efficiency and the ASEAN Declaration of Environment Sustainability are also crucial for our success. In response to the acceleration of our ASEAN coverage, Thailand has been easing our travel restriction and reopening the countries. We have been welcoming foreign tourists from the low risk countries since the 1st of November. A law saying visitor scheme to accommodate the new type of nomad worker was also launched. We are also pursuing the bio circular green economy policy, which emphasizes sustainable and inclusive development to enhance plastic, to rebuild and revitalize the country economy using the combination of our natural resource and cutting edge innovations. This would create more income and deployment while enabling Thailand to achieve the UN sustainable development goal. We look forward to more international cooperation in this direction and will come on contributor especially next year when Thailand the host of the APEC. As for the Ministry of Commerce, we have played an instrumental role in supporting sustainable and stable economic growth to various measures such as first, expanding marketing potential for grassroots economy, especially SME, micro SME, and female entrepreneur to capacity building program and creating more market opportunities. Second, promoting trade in the new normal context to the e-commerce action plan and organizing hybrid trade show 
and dirt. Speeding up our trade negotiations to expand our market reach, Thailand is committed to all our international obligations, especially the current 13 FTA and the ASEAN. Cooperation in the region, especially in the ASEAN, represents a chance to reduce inequalities as more inclusive and lower entry barriers would allow more small and medium enterprise to participate in the global value change. And also please to inform everyone here that the ASEAN shall enter into force on the 1st January next year. Lastly, I must thank Dr. Frank Jürgen Richter and the Horacid team for your hard work and education in organizing this meeting. International cooperation remains one of our best tools toward social prosperity and sustainability. And I am honored to join force with everyone here today to contribute to that goal. I wish the Horacid and say meeting to be all possible success and look forward to learn new and exciting ideas as the result of this session and many more. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this uh, was the pre-recorded video by uh, Dr. Sansan Samarapa, uh, Vice Minister for Commerce uh, for Thailand, of, of Thailand. Uh, Dr. Sansan was a World Bank economist before turning to politics in 2001. He became MP of the Democratic Party and worked as Deputy Party Chief. Uh, so uh, uh, today, unfortunately, he cannot join physically, but uh, uh, he joined us with pre-recorded pre video. Uh, so based on uh, the, the remarks of him and also uh, remarks by uh, Indian Excellency, uh, I'd like to deepen the discussion with uh, uh, Vice Minister Wu uh, about the future of Asian economy and its recovery. And uh, I think uh, both two uh, uh, minister and vice minister stress the importance of uh, sustainability and also thinking about uh, the climate change. Uh, just we have recently finished uh, COP26 uh, in Glasgow and the uh, world uh, uh, community agreed uh, to reduce uh, the uh, uh, the outcome of the uh, CO2 and also try to minimize the increase of temperature uh, worldwide uh, up to 1.5 degree. Uh, so my first question to Minister Bu, uh, what about uh, your country's initiative uh, when we think about uh, the economic recovery of, of your country, uh, how much importance uh, about the aspect of sustainability and uh, also diversification and some other issues uh, reflected on the, the, the idea of uh, SDGs? I cannot hear. I cannot hear. Uh, first of all, I think we need to highlight that there are two unique things uh, that make this uh, ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, different from the uh, previous uh, crisis. Uh, for instance, the 14th, 14th uh, Black Death uh, crisis or, or the early 20th uh, century uh, Spanish uh, disease. Uh, they are the global spread and is multi-dimensional impacts of this uh, current uh, pandemic, uh, 19 pandemic. Um, today, uh, we pre-COVID, we see that uh, the world was in the midst of uh, intense uh, globalization, uh, with free flows of goods, uh, services, and people. But today, we see that uh, the speed of globalization and international integration is no longer the same. Uh, of course, uh, we all understand that pre-COVID was already debate about the type of globalization or whether a free market uh, growth model was the most suited to uh, addressing the dimensional, multi-dimensional problems of growth, particularly when taking into account the social, environmental, and economic uh, aspect. Uh, with that be, being said, uh, I think the future of Asia economic growth 
lies in the type of globalization and the type of growth model that we together are going to choose. Um, I would say that the, the future of economic growth in Asia lies in a kind of growth model and globalization that is safe, secure, and sustainable. Uh, and in order to tackle that and to pursue that kind of growth and globalization, I think that we need to take action at two levels. At the domestic level, I think first of all, we need to uh, do our homework. That is to uh, you know, very quickly vaccinate our population in order to emerge early from this uh, pandemic. The key things here are not just, not just you know, high level of vaccination, but also rising a public awareness you know, in the new circumstances, as, as mentioned in Japan. It's a, it, it's a very good case in port. I have just returned from Japan. I have it very vividly you know, in my mind. The second thing is that I do agree with the previous speakers that we need to emphasize you know, more strongly the critical importance of sustainability. The element of sustainability should be instilled at every level of education, you know, from the kindergarten to you know, university levels. We need to instill a greater level of sustainability in how we produce, you know, in, in our lifestyle, green lifestyle, uh, green uh, product, production, and also uh, uh, green consumption as well. So the issue of sustainability is very important. Of course, it will be, I would be remiss uh, not to mention even more robust investment in science and te technology. I think it needs to be said that countries should not limit cooperation in science and technology that could only exacerbate existing gaps and only true international cooperation and support among developed and developing countries will we, we be able to reach new highs in technology, especially in digital technology, in order to put it to good use. And at the international level, I think that it's very important that we need to have more international cooperation, not less international cooperation. Unfortunately, unfortunately today, it seems that we are seeing more risk, more dangers, more challenges, rather than more opportunity and optimism. We continue to uh, be faced with existing, you know, existing uh, systemic issues and also newly emerging issues such as the decline and the lack of efficiency of global institutions or increased major power competition in electoral actions that go in, in international law in every domain. So I think it's very important that, you know, uh, we need particularly major powers and all countries, developing and developed countries, need to bridge their differences and increase cooperation in order to work with the international communities to re-establish and respect principles and guidelines uh, set out in the international law and facilitate and consolidate the international community under which the, inter the international should be at the core. And secondly, I think we need to have a revival of regional and global institutions in order to foster greater collective actions and to create more common goods for the international community. And thirdly, I think it's very important that the strategic communities, including the scholars and academia, need to play a more active role in bringing about new ideas and new recommendations in order to, to shape you know, a better world. A world which is more sustainable in development, which is more stable and more stable. So it's, it's very important. So that's just my view. Can you put on the mic, please? Yes. Uh, thank you, Minister Bu, uh, for your excellent uh, uh, reaction uh, and about the importance of sustainability and also overall uh, impression and overall strategy how to 
consolidate and cooperate uh, globally and regionally and internationally. And uh, uh, I just uh, point to the fact that uh, uh, some of the previous, uh, I mean, speaker, including the minister uh, from India, uh, stress that the rule of law is quite important when we think about, uh, uh, you know, uh, economy, even business and economy. And also, uh, there is a kind of idea recently that uh, coalition of democracies uh, has to be strengthened. So it's rather than, uh, you know, it used to be uh, only in politics and uh, poli politics and the business is somewhat uh, has been differentiated in the past decades. But nowadays, uh, as tension uh, between uh, uh, democracies and maybe uh, I cannot say, uh, I'm not sure I can say non-democracies, uh, they try to uh, make two uh, groups uh, into the region. Uh, but uh, uh, like Japan or like Vietnam, uh, we uh, open up uh, to deal with so many countries in the region. Uh, it might be a, a tough question if uh, you cut off uh, some of the relations uh, based on the rule of law or based on the democratic principles. So how, how, what is your strategy? Uh, about uh, the regional cooperation, uh, is it uh, still continue to be the consensus base like uh, ASEAN took uh, for a long time, or uh, it moved to more like uh, uh, based on principles uh, and rule of law or, or you know democracies? Those are uh, those are more important, becoming uh, more important principles in your in your vision to seek for or, or not only in demo uh, diplomacy but also in uh, doing business. Uh, I think uh, because of the um, uh, difference, um, political and economic system, and also a big, big different uh, history, and different uh, history, and even uh, differences in country uh, between and among countries. So there are different ways and uh, different methods in order to achieve uh, democracy. And I would say that uh, the the most common, uh, you know, uh, the best democracy for all countries, is how we can ensure a better uh, spiritual uh, and material, materialistic uh, life uh, for, for the population. And that's, that's the best way. And, and the best democracy is how we can do that. And that's why, uh, you know, whether it's in Asia or in uh, the Western countries, uh, I think uh, the, the key thing is how every government uh, needs to create uh, a better uh, living and working environment uh, in which uh, every individual uh, and every community in the society can fully uh, realize their potential in order to enjoy the fruits of growth and also in order to contribute actively to the common uh, economic and social well-being for the society. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, or maybe time is uh, so limited, but maybe I, I may add some more questions about uh, or based on your experience in Japan, because uh, uh, we, uh, including Japan, we uh, now the world is facing the shortage of semiconductors, and the uh, Japanese government just recently uh, gave uh, some subsidy to uh, the new factory uh, from Taiwan, a Taiwan company, to set up a factory in. Uh, uh, western part of Kyushu, Japan, western part of Japan, Kumamoto. And uh, uh, we should have a kind of, uh, you know, semiconductors company, a factory in Japan, and uh, we uh, keep uh, supply chain here in Japan. Uh, so uh, what is your uh, strategy or how to tackle the problem of shortage of semiconductors and also maybe in addition the uh, sharp rising of oil prices uh, in uh, those are very much uh, could be negative uh, impact to uh, any economy, but how to tackle these issues uh, nowadays by your country, by your government? Uh, we think that uh, on the one hand, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, is causing uh, a lot of uh, disruption and difficulties for our economy and our society. Uh, it also offer you know rare opportunity for us to, in order to attract uh, foreign investment uh, you know, from outside, and uh, we have uh, just uh, concluded a highly successful uh, you know official visit by Prime Minister Pak Min Jin uh, to Japan, uh, under which uh, we have received uh, uh, you know a lot of uh, interest from the uh, business and investment uh, communities uh, from Japan. 
and um, all uh, share the view that uh, it is uh, uh, you know the right time for Japanese investors and business persons uh, to make even more uh, investment uh, in in Vietnam at the moment, uh, not only in uh, traditional sectors uh, such as uh, shoes or textiles, uh, making uh, products, but also in uh, high-tech sectors such as uh, semiconductors and also electronics and other uh, you know uh, high uh, high high-tech uh, sector as well. Uh, number one, because uh, our two uh, countries have uh, a lot of things to uh, uh, to. I would say to to add to one another's strengths. Um, uh, Vietnam, uh, we have a pol political stability, and also we have the uh, high level of young workers, which are hardworking, uh, highly adaptable, and and flexible. And that's why we we are able to uh, manufacture more sophisticated um, products uh, uh, from uh, you know Japanese uh, in investors. And the third thing is that because of the uh, uh, the changes or the transformation in supply chain uh, because of the impacts of COVID-19. Uh, the country in Vietnam, we have uh, uh, recovered from the worst point in the you know, uh, pandemic control and we are now uh, reopening the factories and uh, the government is now uh, very committed to economic restructuring and uh, creating the best and most favorable uh, investment and business environment to attract, uh, you know, uh, foreign investors. So it is the right time for uh, Japanese uh, investors to come and to make more investment uh, in uh, Vietnamese uh, high, high, uh, high tech, uh, you know, sectors. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, now time is up. But uh, uh, again, uh, we have so many things in common. Uh, you know, not only with you, Vietnam, and also Thailand, India, and Japan. Uh, we have the uh, same Asian tradition with common values and also uh, by promoting further uh, cooperation bilaterally and regionally, uh, we can benefit uh, for both sides. And especially Japan and Vietnam, uh, we have so many things in common and uh, also uh, both countries are encouraging tourism uh, from foreign investment. Uh, so uh, we, we can learn each other uh, from each other many things. And in that context, uh, I think uh, we can find so many keys and hints uh, throughout the discussion today. Uh, so uh, again, uh, thank you so much for the audience, uh, some of the uh, changes, recent changes of the procedures, but uh, I believe it was a really fantastic session. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, participants and Minister Bu again. And uh, uh, let's uh, finish, conclude the session. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Yes.